Okay. So welcome to Kokriya Vitalitas. This is our second journey in November, the full moon, and our beautiful guest and facilitator is Moon Title, and she is offering basic guidelines for the reason for and how to establish a women's wellness circle or a sister circle. And I want to begin as Grandmother Karina of the Turquoise Heart with a prayer. And I invite you to take a deep breath in and allow yourself to be grounded in this moment, to realize that the roots of your motherline tree go to the dark mother, the deep soil, the dark black brown particles of the earth and allow your roots to enter deeper than the trauma of your current story, deeper than the trauma of the last two years, deeper than protests. Digest the possibility that you can metabolize and digest love as we enter the deep roots in the mother earth with this prayer. May all mothers know that mothers are loved. May all sisters know that sisters are strong. May all daughters know that we are worthy, beautiful, and powerful. May the circle of women live on. May the fire of the goddess burn on. Waheya, waheya, waheya. May you hear the waheya go down through the roots to root and connect to other sister circles, other women's circles, to women's wellness and women's wealth and women's prosperity. That has been seeded by the goddess multiple generations ago. As you connect to the one great mother tree of your ancestry and beyond that to the one great tree of this planet, appreciate yourself for being here as an answer to a prayer as a prophecy, as one who is oracular in tongue and know the power of your voice for the East, for the South, for the West, for the North, from the great above and the stars and the galactic core to the central intelligence of the sun of this universe that shows us more and more to the great 13 moon cycle around planet Earth. We give thanks for you, for you are the mother you are the sister, you are the daughter, you are woman, you are the goddess, and you are the fire. For all our relations, moon, may you facilitate us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, grandmother. Thank you for opening the space for this beautiful conversation. So on this eve of for the December full moon, we continue the conversations and the seeds and the streams from the November full moon of She Who Walks Tall. And we're here in this conversation in the lands of Northern Americas. You're on the Western side and I am on the Eastern side. Um, and so just wanna acknowledge that. And as we begin, I wanna invite anyone joining us to, if you haven't already, make yourself a cup of tea and get something to be cozy and warm for anyone joining us from the Northern climes. And um, let's just begin and really honor, just con a continuation, let's honor the lands um, where we are and the elements where each of us are in our homes. We did this earlier, we do an intention setting ceremony um, at the beginning of every month. And we did ours this morning, we do it the first Tuesday of the month. And we began um, by honoring the elements where each of us live. So let's just take a moment, whatever way works for you to just really open, open to the earth right where you live and really let your awareness travel out to connect with the layers of mother earth where you are. Is there snow on the ground? Is there grass or stones? And let your awareness really greet earth where you are right here, right now. And as you breathe in, breathe in the energy from the earth in your home and breathe out your energy to meet earth. Feel her presence and her warmth and her stability and feel all the layers and just allow your body to synchronize and open 
with the earth where you dwell. And then with your next breath, begin to expand and to greet the waters where you live. Perhaps they're coming down in flakes of snow or in droplets of rain, or maybe you synchronize with underground streams or the lakes and rivers where you live. I live on the edge of a huge lake, Lake Champlain. So I'm greeting the waters there. So just greet the waters in your home, allowing yourself to breathe out or energies into the waters and breathe in the energies of the waters into you. It's another way to synchronize, tune, and connect with the waters where you live. Breathing in those energies into you, breathing out as you greet them with your warmth your love, and your honoring. On your next breath, come into connection with the air where you live. Notice the quality of air outside your home. Notice the temperature, the texture and the weight. Notice the way the air moves or rests at this time. As you breathe that air into your lungs and that air passes through your lungs to be absorbed into your cells, breathe in the quality of the air where you live. And of course, as we breathe, we're connecting the rainforests and with the diatoms of the ocean and with the places where we are, just connecting with that air element, breathing out and breathing in. Let your spirit glide on the air. Become one with the air. And then with your next breath, inviting your awareness to connect with the fires where you are. For me, that's with the fire burning in my hearth. For you, that could be, if you're in the Southern climes this morning, we had sisters from New Zealand, sisters from Florida, the warm places. So for them, the fire was in the sun in this moment. For you, it could be in the heat source for your home, the fires that burn in your body, or a candle, and just breathing in with a fire energy present in your home for you at this time. And breathe that into a fire flame just below your navel. Two finger widths, three finger widths below your navel in the center. Allow the fires that are present in your home to light that fire inside. Just breathe in, breathe your warmth in to meet that warmth. And traveling up through the central channel and into your heart, feel the light of the fire in your heart. Continuing travel up to your third eye center Igniting that fire in your third eye. So we bless our eyes and our ears, our hearts, and our womb spaces. So we enter into this sacred conversation of women and women's circles. Breathing in, we inhale and lengthen. 
Breathing out, we exhale and open our eyes and come into the sacred, joyful conversation. <laughs> Okay, here we are. So, women's circles for healing. We spoke of this some last month, and this is a chance to kind of deepen in. And later this month around solstice, we'll have another time to come together where we explore the cultivation and the recognition of our power, ways we've diminished our power, ways we're afraid of our power, ways we hide from our power, and ways we step into our power. And so women gathering in circles is a strong way to cultivate our power. Um, it's part of my life's mission and work to help all people, and also women, but all people step into the fullness of the authenticity of who we are, and to heal the wounds that prevent us and hold us back from being fully who we are and to awaken, inspire, and realize our full authenticity. That's one of the really powerful things that happen in circles because our wounds are relational in nature, many if not all of them, whether they're relational with other humans, with ourselves, or the web of life. And when we gather in circle and we open the space, you know, and you can open the space in any way that resonates for you. Grandmother and I just open the space in two ways. We both have many more ways. We open and cultivate space and you'll find your ways bringing in elements of the sacred, elements of embodiment, elements where we condition and open the space to create a safe container to open and expand the field of resonance, possibility, synchronicity, and healing. And so we open the spaces and the circles we gather in. And then we have an opportunity where we really get to fully step into the authenticity of who we are. And the circles that I facilitate and that I um, support other people to create and facilitate, they're spaces of deep permission. Deep permission where you get to really be fully who you are and you get to show up just as you are. And there's enough space in our circle that one woman could be having the best day of her life, best year of her life, and another can be having the worst. And there's just as much space for them and everyone in between. And what I find is that the ripples out from these circles are so profound because having spaces where you feel safe enough to go to the depths of who you are and to be seen in those places, having spaces where you can explore and experiment with how you show up within yourself and within relations, having spaces where you can lay your confusion bare, where you feel safe enough that other people can reflect into your confusion and you don't feel projected upon or placed upon. Really profound healing happens that ripples out into every area of your life. That's what I've seen again and again and again um, with the women in my circles over the years. And I feel like it's really important for us to gather in these ways and to find our ways back to ourselves and back to each other, where as much as we can, we drop this illness of separation that is so pervasive in our time. So I just want to weave a grandmother's perception in, Moon, as you sip your beautiful tea, may it be ashwagandha or ginger or... I'm sorry, I'm just laughing because I've never seen you be so quiet for so long. Oh, I know, but I actually am quiet for a long time. But we were both <laughs> long-term retreatants, so I, I know what quietness lives, where it lives inside of me. But I want to share, um, I almost want to put a um, psychic ditto on the page that my experience in women's circles has been to break the isolationism, but also to break the separation and the competition that came out of the Second World War of the competition in order to survive. So I was born in 1948 and my mother was um, a teenager in a high school during the Second World War. And she has very firmly anchored herself in the experience of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And that what is possible with human genius is also possible to create and or to completely destroy. And so she came out of that and at 18 wed 
my dad, who was the Finnish prince as far as she was concerned in Sault Ste. Marie. And she brought that trauma with her. In the 90s, when I married my second husband, I realized I was still bearing the fruit of that trauma. The fear of why fully create if human genius can actually destroy everything. So I had this starting with projects and initiatives. My children were already in their teens and then dropping them. And so that self-sabotage was not my fault, but it was a direct reflection of the root of my mother's trauma. And when I shared that with my second husband, he was already involved in gay men's movements. He was bisexual. You know, I really married a whole kettle of fish and it was wonderful. And he was also involved in a once a month healing circle for men. And they circulated between all of their houses. And once every seven or eight months, they came to our house. And I became jealous of men's intimacy. I became really like, you know, I would like hang on the edge of our balcony and watch all these men's arrives. And I had the tea and the soup prepared for them. And then I, as per agreement, would go upstairs, but they would all greet me and hug me. And I felt so embraced. It was like, why can't I be embraced by women? What is this that stops me from being fully engaged in a selective circle of women? And it was my mother's wound. And so at the end of four or five gatherings of men's circles, my husband, I was complaining again, my husband said, so start a woman's circle. Call, you're working with all these women one-to-one, -one. start a woman's circle. And I did. And that was the end of my second marriage as I knew it, because this is a transition or transmutational experience. In the, in the deep root of women's circles is alchemy is that we go into these quantum particles of configurations of the trauma of our ancestors, even beyond our mothers, and we dig all this shit up. And as beautiful moon offered, we hold it as equal. It's, it's the best and the worst. That's like a marriage vow, for better or for worse. In a woman's circle, we hold it all. And that was the beginning of my transmutation into the next stage of my life. And in these transition times, women's circles for me are what we need to reinitiate and or reparticipate in or deepen in and evolve our consciousness even more as we lead for all our relations. Moon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something just so exquisitely beautiful and nourishing about like the sweetness and the alchemical energy that happens when women gather together. Um, there's nothing like it. And it's so nourishing at such a deep level. Um, and I mean, tonight we're talking about women's circles, of course, any circle where humans gather and intend to support each other, but we're speaking about women's circles tonight. And um, it's so interesting because I remember you telling me this um, part of your history, like a month ago or so when we last spoke and what's so interesting um it kind of passed by that night but actually my relationship with women's circles also started through men um so when I was growing up and still now actually my dad's been part of a men's circle for I don't know maybe 35 years or more at this point mm -hmm. and they're very deep very intimate and you know I was kind of like oh like I want that and then um my first love was um in a men's circle when we were living in Maine and their connections were so deep and so rich and so intimate and I also had that jealousy of like well like where's my circle and um and I I tried to create one at the time um invited neighbors and friends multi-generational women's circle and it just it fell flat like I remember like I cleaned our cabin and like you know set out the candles and like made the special tea but the women who came, they didn't want to engage at the level of depth. Like they just came to kind of chat. And I remember being so sad and disappointed because the depth that my partner at the time, his men's circle, like they just went deep and raw and real. And like, that's not what these women wanted. And then I joined this other circle and it was also like, they like, I mean, it's great. They wanted to kayak together. And I mean, I love kayaking with other people, but I was hungry for this like deep spiritual sisterhood. 
Um, so, and I just continued like cultivating and creating that, you know, for all the, since, th since then. Um, and it's just, yeah, the potency, like the alchemical process. And it's like, yeah, the ability to like name our shadows because yeah. like shame and our shot like hides in the shadows. So when we can have a situation that's safe, like genuinely safe, where we can really share like what we view as ugly that lives inside and to see the way that that's like tenderly accepted and held by others, the shame begins to melt. And it gives each of us permission to step more fully into the fullness of who we are. Um, and it's so important and so profound. And then we get to like really look at deeply like the ways that we're tender with others that we're not tender with ourselves, you know? And, and when you develop this depth in a circle, it's like, then you can ask yourself, oh, if my sister in the circle were sharing what I'm sharing, would I judge her the way that I'm judging myself? Or would I shame her the way that I'm shaming myself? And the answer is always no. Mm -hmm. And then it's like this big out breath of like, oh, so can I bring that to me? Can I bring that to myself? And the more we experience that, that capacity grows. And so- <laughs> I know tonight we wanted to talk about like, what are the ingredients of like, mm -hmm. you know, a, a women's circle and everyone, you know, it's going to lead them differently. It depends on your purpose and intention. So getting really clear, you know, meditating, praying about what one might want their purpose and intention to be. So for those of you watching, thinking about that, like, what is your purpose and intention for calling together women? And then praying, what form might that take? Do you want to meet in person? Do you want to meet online? You know, is it a one-time circle? Is it you know, wanting to cultivate ongoing? And you begin to build the form and the container and the structure. And, you know, you can feel into, like, for example, most of my circles, all of them start with some kind of an opening practice, again, to condition and open us to the, ourselves, the space, each other. Um, usually there's some kind of a sharing circle. And maybe there's a content, a focus, some deep healing work. It kind of depends on like the way you want to do it and what your creation and collaboration process is. Um, for me, my my creation process really varies. Like uh, sometimes um, something like for me, it's it could be any time. It might, I might be in the shower or have a dream in the middle of the night or be swimming across the lake or going for a bike ride. And then it's like, boom, the whole thing's right there. And I just write it down, you know, sometimes I don't know until right before you can tune in and begin to like weave your awareness around the energy of the women who are coming and around the energy of like, well, what's happening in life right now? Like, you know, what are the universal energies moving through with the planets and the stars? And you begin to weave your awareness through that, through the women who are going to be present. And then something like will emerge that's like a shape and a form. And then you just open into that once you're in the space. And of course, it helps to come up with some baseline agreements, you know, for example, confidentiality, if that's a value of your circle, and to talk about what that means, does that mean, you know, that you don't speak of anything that's shared in the circle, or that you don't share names, you know, really having your agreements in my circles, the agreements are that our stories that we share, are held, you know, within confidence, but that anything that we as individuals learn or experience or are inspired by in the circle, of course, that we can share, um, because otherwise, how are our lives living and breathing and changing if we have to just hold things in the world? Mm -hmm. um, another really important principle in my circles is not projecting upon each other so that when we listen, we listen really deeply and we talk about the invitation is like, well, what was moving through you? as someone else was sharing as opposed to like advice giving or like, you know, oh, I know this because I had this experience. It's more like, you know, this the, the baseline commitment is being embodied and like in your own skin, in your own presence. So it's like, oh, you know, grandmother, when you shared about, you know, your mother and your father and what you experienced, here's what moved through me. Here's what was touched in me and my present and my history. And here's what's alive. Um, and that we make a commitment to really speak to what's alive and present. And so you can have your own agreements, either that you offer if you're facilitating and you want to hold the space and say, here are the agreements, or you could, in your first gathering together, you could say, okay, what are the agreements we want to make together as a group, you know, and usually 
timekeeping is a part of that because like some of us are very, very spacious and expansive with time. Others of us really like to stick within time and then there's everywhere in between. So it's like coming up to like, what are the agreements? What helps everyone feel safe? Because we all have different needs um, to feel safe. And as a facilitator, you want to cultivate that safety in your own system and then see what, how you can extend that to everyone else so everyone feels held and feels met. Um, so those are a few things I could share. Uh, thank you. So what I hear you saying is that there is a universal uh, way to perceive the creation of a woman's circle or a sister circle. And the first thing is to make a decision through prayer or meditation to ask from the higher forces, from the divine oneness. Um, Eve Answer calls it the, the universal vagina. <laughs> When she does her prayer, she looks up and she sees herself at that cervical ring and just receiving what she needs from the great womb mother. So however we perceive it, to receive that, to be receptive to that, that it will fulfill not only our need for safety and our need for sharing, but it will be perceived as a universal calling so that we can gather in that container uh, women who are ready to go to the depth of all that. And that there is two major agreements beyond the container, and that is permission and confidentiality. And there's actually several agreements. And the third is speak only to what is alive within oneself rather than projecting. We call it speaking to the sacred fire, not at anyone. Uh, we also say that we're not interested in stories about we want to know the lived experience of in, in this moment is where we want to land. Hey, okay. next, next step. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Thank you, grandmother. And yeah, and of course, for those of you watching that are a little more left brained and might not be praying at the cervical ring or in any other <laughs> You know, those intentions can also form like, oh, I want to connect with pe new pe women in my community. Like it can be, you know, you know, some some of us have, you know, these big cosmic experiences like grandmother and some some don't. And so it's like really finding your way. And like grandmother, you said, it's like the universal principle, you know, is to connect in whatever way you connect and sort of get really clear. Like, why are you calling this circle into being? And I love how you brought in. Um, the sacred fire, because that's such an important principle, you know, and it's, you know, if your if your circle is on zoom, and there isn't like physically a fire in the center, taking some time as a facilitator to really visualize and establish and maybe you guide the participants through that, or maybe you just do that as the facilitator that central sacred fire in the middle, you know, that can really hold the energy absorb, like the energy of everything that's shared so that no one individual ends up like taking that so that there is this fire in the center and if you're in person but you're inside in a building of course it's having a candle in the middle or some kind of simple shrine or altar you know with some stones or a bowl of water um, sometimes I'll have a bowl of water in a circle and the water will just absorb you know everything in the session or we'll speak our prayers into the water and then at the end on their own if it's a zoom session the women on their own time in their own way will offer that water um, to the earth or to a tree where they live. And that's a way that like the prayers are another way the prayers are spreading into the land. Um, yeah. Speak more about the ripple and um, spreading into the land. Mm. That's the benefit and the outcome of doing this work. Yeah. Well, so there's the ripple spreading into the land. I mean, I think in so many ways, in these modern times, we are reconnecting ourselves with the land because humanity in so-called civilized, whatever that means, has like moved away from earth rhythms and earth time and earth connection into the world of the clock and into the mm -hmm. world of technology, which gives us ways to connect across the continent and across continents, which I'm very grateful for. And so, yeah, some of some much of our work as humanity, there's a lot here for all of us in these times is is reconnecting with the land, reconnecting with the trees and the animals and the plants. And in in having these women's circles, you know, and offering 
our prayers, offering our experience to the land. It's like we're weaving that. And with each of us doing that, you know, in our own home territories, we are like furthering that for all. And it's like, you know, here I am, you know, in Burlington, Vermont, engaging in these prayers and these mm -hmm. ceremonies and these circles and these connections. And there you are in in Ottawa, Canada? No, 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 no. Oh, thank you for putting me in the capital of Canada. Thank you. May the Peace Tower get reactivated. All right. No, I'm actually on the northern tip of Vancouver Island, the closest point to the Northwest Pacific that faces, if I were to go due north, it would go to Haida Gwaii and to Alaska. Okay. Ah, I see. Yes. Okay. I, by the way, I knew where you were in space and time. I just didn't know the name of where you were. So I don't know where Ottawa is, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Take a good look. I used to get this when I was 15 and went to a kid's camp down in uh, just outside Traverse City in Michigan. And I could not believe that the American girls did not know anything about Canada. And yet we studied American political systems in grade 11 history. <laughs> I wrote a report on Abraham Lincoln and the Douglas debates. Lo siento, abuelita, por la ignorancia en este país. Ah, sí, gracias a ti. Por confesiones. Yes, I accept. Es <laughs> muy triste. <laughs> so let's, let's speak about the multiculturalism and the multi-ethnicity of women's circles and how important that is. Okay, but I just want to add one more thing about the ripple. Uh, so, 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 so it's like here we are. You're in the island, at the tip of Vancouver, and I'm here in Burlington, Vermont, and we're doing the sacred work, and then we're also pouring it into the land where we are, and we're so that our our local home communities are touched by the work that we're doing, and those ripples are also they happen organically, like. I cannot even count the number of times that there's been like a small micro interaction in a circle. And then a woman will later come back to share how it affected something with her partner, her children, a work situation, a situation with friends and so on. It's like these small micro interactions, the alchemical power of the women's circles is it really, they really transform and ripple out into our lives. So they're rippling out you know, as we connect with the land and the earth and energetically make that choice with our communities, they're rippling out as we're healing and transforming. And in these small ways, it's like, it doesn't take a whole, it's, I mean, it's sort of like a light, uh, like a lightning path to mm -hmm. um, awakening, realization, healing, transforming, stepping into our full embodied empowerment, authentic selves, our women's circles, because these like micro things that happen, they have huge ripple effects in awesome, awesome ways. Um, Give us an example in your personal life of a micro interaction where there's a magnificent ripple. Mm. Yeah, it's funny. I'm not, I'm more, I'm like, I have my facilitator hat on. So I got to take that off so I can think about myself. So let me take <laughs> off my facilitator hat because I, I can give you like all these examples of women in the circles, but I'm going to like kind of come in with myself. Yeah. So I, I'm having trouble landing on the specific micro interaction, but I'll give enough example that I think it'll be clear. So it's like, yeah, so something that I am ashamed about, if I share something that I'm ashamed about in a circle, and then I'm met with understanding, and I'm met with compassion, and I'm met with recognition, and I find out, oh, there's like other women in the circle who have had that same experience. For example, it dissolves a piece of shame that keeps me held. And then the next time I move forward in my life and I experience shame, it doesn't even need to be connected to that piece of shame. There is less constriction, less narrowing, and more holding around shame in general. So I might feel more comfortable to like stand up out of that. Or maybe it like happens in a slower way where I'm like, oh, I feel held in my moment of shame, even though no one else is there that that was in that circle. It's like I feel more held. I feel the presence of those those women. Um hmm. so I mean. I can say, oh, well, here's an example. Um, so in our um, Six Moons Facilitator Circle, you led us through this um, experience and visualization 
of like all of us standing um, with our backs to the fire in a circle with our Achilles heels and our elbows. And now when I feel myself like under attack or in difficult situations, it's like I immediately just feel that it's present. I don't even have to ask for it. And I feel less vulnerable and I feel stronger. So that's like, I mean, what I'm talking about is more on a subtle layer, but there's also just, so for example, now I'm thinking of like a participant, you know, it's like, I have a participant maybe who's always late and has like shame around always being late. And then it ends up getting looked at in the group or shared at in the group. And then all of their interactions with family and friends around time is just transformed. And they find themselves showing up completely different with family and friends around time because Beautiful. like this micro interaction happened in the group around lateness, for example. Beautiful micro interactions. So I'm going to share my micro interaction. I had several of them coming through while you were sharing because we're rippling to each other and between each other. But the one that is most poignant for me, it's it's really like, huh, is that we have a cooperative gas station. And in my research and studies of why am I here is that Finnish people are naturally cooperative. Now, that's part of our ethnicity. And so British Columbia has the highest rate of cooperatives established in North America. Like, no wonder I came to British Columbia because it's like part of my ethnicity qualification and resonance. All right. So I go out. They have had to move because they're rebuilding their gas station here in town in Port Hardy. And they've had to move way down the highway, about 15 or 20 minutes. And it's worthwhile going to. So the first time I go out there, I have my co-op gas card. I get my gas tank filled up. I meet the women that I'm used to meeting here downtown there in a new location. But there's something like new location, new women, new way. And the one who comes out to say, okay, your gas tank is full. You've done your ding ding. She comes to me and she looks at me and she says, can I have a hug? And that's our micro interaction. And we embrace one another. And I look at her and I look at myself and I go, we're part of this. We're part of this cooperative sisterhood. We're part of this. We will go out of our way, not just for the gas, but for sister hug. We're part of this circle. So that's my micro interaction and how it rippled. Mm. Mm. Thank mm. you. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. It's so, it's so delicious. And, you know, that reminds me of like, so one theme that I see happen for women again and again and again is like being able to speak to your needs mm. in a women's circle and have that be met helps women more easily, naturally, and comfortably speak to their needs in mm. their lives, um, mm. which has huge ripples. Mm. Yeah, triples. Yeah, I would say that's the shadow work that I had to do in women's circles in the 90s about my mother's um, perception of incapacitation to speak to her needs. And no matter what, this was after dad died, no matter what my sister would say, mom, just tell us what you need. Like she would get so frustrated. And then my brother, my my mom would actually express her need and my brother would go, oh, mom, stop being so negative. You know, everything is, you know, and then I would hear my mom and I cared for her in Mexico for seven months and I would hear my mother third chakra opened to finally express all her needs, mm. finally express all her needs. And that was my mother's dying and ending became this gigantic wave. I would have to say it's been a tsunami for me to ride her wave. It's been an amazing tsunami of just unconditionality, just unconditional. You know, I've already finished with her apologies to us as kids. I've already completed that. Now it's a tsunami of riding this crest of a wave of the mother love, mm. of just washing away the quote, quote, sins of the world. And so that's one of the outcomes and benefits of women's wellness circles. I, can, I can't see women being well one to one. I can only see it in the womb of a circle. Yes. Grandmother, I'm aware of the time. Is there anything yes. else that feels important, vital, and potent for us to fit into our conversation? Important, vital, and potent. I want you to give at least two resources for our women. Okay. Well, one resource is 
please come and join us on December the 21st um, to explore, recognize, cultivate our power. Um, another resource is um, reach out. I'll put some links in the chat below. Um, come join a small group with me. Um, come train to become a facilitator if you want. Come work one-to-one -one and then step into that and just gather, create, and explore the power of women's circles for healing because they are amazing and you are amazing. So just step fully into your power and your authenticity. The world needs you. The world needs all of you in your fullness, which is messy and can feel broken sometimes, can feel ugly sometimes, and can feel powerful and beautiful other times. And all of you is welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Beautiful. Thank you for that. I'm going to give a resource that I did for uh, in July full moon. I didn't make it down to Mount Shasta. I did it at Strathcona. And I read a book called Thinking Like a Mountain Towards a Council of All Beings. So this is a circle work, mm. but it's a council of all beings. And it really speaks to, as women, we are the Tete, we are Tikhar Han, we are the teacher, we are the student, we are the facilitator, we are the participant. And it speaks to the fact that we show up with our animal totems and our bird winged ones as allies. We never show up as simply a two-legged. So this is interbeing. May our circles be honored. May our circles be replenished. May our circles nourish other circles. May there be, and here's my final prayer, may there be a vision around the planet of circles engaging and interacting with circles around the world. And may these be the flowers of life that are emerging from the chaotic mess and the rigidity that's dissolving, the lack of fluidity, the lack of remembrance that we are the elemental body. So thank you, beautiful moon, for sharing your vitality and your co-creativity and your invitations. And I'm going to close with this prayer that I started with. May all mothers know that we are loved. May all sisters know that we are strong. May all daughters know that we are worthy, beautiful, and powerful. And may the circle of women live on. May the fire of the goddess burn through us. Wahe he he, wahe he he, wahe he he. From the above, shoo, to the deep below, shoo, to the east and the air, shoo, to the south and the fire, shoo, to the west and the water, shoo, to the north and the earth, shoo, to the deep within. Know that we are held. We are held and we are held. May we be welcomed. Om Dea. Om Matakrias. Thank you, beautiful Thank you. moon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Bye for now.